In this video, we will be looking at uh, some beginning of optimization, specifically unconstrained optimization. So, the relevance of optimization machine learning is uh, very, very high. As we saw in the first week, the basic idea behind uh, most of machine learning is that you want to build models. Okay? So, data models that input, uh, they take some input and map it to output data. Now, usually what the our maps depend on certain parameters. And uh, the way we improve our models as you will see in the next week is based on something called training that is you give more and more data and try and improve your parameters. So, usually you would like to know how much does uh, your output change depending on the parameter. So, you have some quantity which is a vector quantity that is changing based on some other uh, vector quantity. So, most of it most of our uh, machine learning is dependent on finding out the best or optimal model for some given set of data. So, most machine learning problems can usually be rewritten as optimization problems. Okay. So, what we will be doing in the next series of videos is to try and introduce as well as review some of you will be familiar with some of these uh, ideas already. So, we will try to introduce some optimization techniques in the coming videos. Okay. So, typically what you try to do in a general optimization task is to maximize or minimize a function. Once again like in the previous videos this function can be something that takes in a vector and gives out a scalar. So, this function the one that you are trying to maximize or minimize is called an objective function or a cost function or a loss function. Okay. So, this term terminology is used interchangeably. So, the function usually in a general optimization task can either be a scalar and this is called a single objective uh, optimization problem or you can have f itself as being a vector. So, in that case it could be a multi objective vector okay. and in this course we are going to restrict ourselves to this case to the single objective optimization problem uh, it is a uh, even that is an involved problem. Okay. So, we will be dealing only with that and this is actually true of most of practical machine learning anyway we try and define a cost function or an objective function which is a scalar by itself. Okay. X in general remember is a vector and typically we are going to deal with the case where f goes from R n to R. Okay. So, an example of such an f for example, could be f of x vector which is 3 dimensional is x 1 square plus x 2 square plus x 3 square here f is going from R 3 to R. Okay. Now, even though the general optimization task is to either maximize or minimize a function, we will typically talk only about minimization because all optimization problems can be called as minimization problems. Why? Because if it is a maximization problem you simply minimize minus f of x. Okay. So, whenever I uh, will be talking in the next few uh, slides as well as the next video, I will only be talking about minimization because maximization is a trivial change by simply changing the sign. Now, here is some notation the optimal solution okay, let me write the white word optimal or the minimal. So, we will be writing that as x star the star denotes optimal. Now, notice the term arg min okay. min of f of x would simply mean minimal value of f arg min of f of x is that x which results in minimum of f. So, just to give you an example if f of x is let us say x square plus 1 then minimum of f is 1, but arg minimum of f is what value of x gave you the value of f equal to 1 this is x equal to 0. Okay. So, we will be using this notation quite often arg min is that argument or that value of x which gives us minimum of f of x. So, here is a quick review of uh, scalar optimization. So, uh, as you remember if you have some function f of x versus x 
it is in general going to be a curve and you are going to have various minima. For now we are going to look at the unconstrained problem, unconstrained problem means there are no constraints on x, there are no limits on x, we are looking at x belonging to the whole of the real line. We will look at the constrained case in the next video. For now in this video we are only looking at the unconstrained problem. So, we will assume x can go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, in such a case you could have some global minimum and global maximum and you could also have a local minimum and local maximum that is locally if I just put a box here all the values around the local minimum are greater than the minimum local minimum. Okay. But this might not be the max the global maximum or the global minimum. Okay. Now, it can be shown that both these extrema we are not going to show it, but both these extrema whether it is local minimum or local maximum all of them will have the property that f prime x equal to 0 in the unconstrained case. Okay. So, these points are called stationary points or critical points. Okay. So, the stationary point as I have just shown could be a local minimum or a local maximum or something called a saddle point. Now, how do we figure out whether it is a local minimum or a local maximum? Um, typically, you look at the second and higher derivatives, we will look at just the second derivative case here. So, if f double prime x, if the second derivative is positive, okay, for example, here, okay, in such a case, it is a local minimum. Okay. For example, if you look at the slope here, you will see that the slope of the slope. Okay. So, as I move away from here the slope increases which is which means that it is a minimum here. Okay. So, here the slope is 0, here the slope is positive. Okay. So, that is why del square f del x square is a local minimum as an exercise you can try and prove this. This is an optional exercise for those who are interested you can try and prove this using the Taylor series. Similarly, if f double prime x is less than 0, then it is a local maximum once again it has the same idea. Now, it can happen that your f double prime x is actually 0. Okay. In such a case, it is called a saddle point. This for example, is if you look at f of x equal to x cube around x equal to 0, this is precisely what happens. Now, what is happening here? This is like the shape of a horse's saddle as we will see in multiple dimensions also. You will see that in this direction there is an increase and in this direction there is a decrease. It is sort of the combination of this curve and this curve. Okay. So, from one side it looks like a local minimum and from another side it looks like a local maximum. Okay. So, this happens when f double prime x is also equal to 0 and in such a case it could be a saddle point. Uh, all of you are familiar with the notation of global maximum or minimum. This is the absolute uh, maximum or the absolute minimum that you will get over all of space. So, now let us look at the multivariate case. Okay. In this case, you are trying to find out f of x once again which is x that minimizes f of x, but x now belongs to R n instead of simply belonging to R, now it belongs to R n. Once again we are looking at the unconstrained problem, there are no constraints on x. Okay. Now, as we saw in the derivative and gradient slides, okay. since now x is a vector quantity, you will now have to evaluate instead of simply d f dx, you have to now evaluate the gradient of f. So, the in, anal in analogy to what we saw earlier, any local extremum, okay. so for example, here this is a local extremum. In this case, the gradient will be 0. Remember, this is the 0 vector, which means del f del x 1 will be 0, del f del x 2 will be 0, so on and so forth. Okay. If it is an n dimensional vector a, x, del f del x n is actually going to be 0. Once again, these are called stationary points or critical points and like in the one dimensional case, you could have a local minimum, local maximum or a saddle point. Okay. So, some examples are given here, this is a local as well as a global maximum. Here for example, is a 
local minimum which is not a global minimum because there are values lower than this going on and this is the example of a classic saddle point. In one direction it is a local maximum and in another direction it is a local minimum. Okay. So, that is what a typical saddle point looks like. Now, how you find out whether this is a local minimum maximum or whether it is a saddle point now depends on the Hessian rather than the simple second derivative remember for vectors the generalization of a second derivative is the Hessian. Okay. So, as we saw on the previous slides Hessian now is a matrix. Now, unlike before I cannot simply say Hessian is positive that has no meaning because it is a full matrix. Okay. So, when Hessian is positive definite okay, you might remember this from the linear algebra slides what does positive definite mean? Positive definite means all eigenvalues of H are positive. Okay. So, this is not even positive semi definite you have to have all values of H being actually positive. Okay. So, if that is the case and remember since the Hessian was a symmetric matrix we are guaranteed to have real eigenvalues so that you can talk about this meaningfully. Okay. So, if the Hessian is positive definite then it is a local minimum if the Hessian is negative definite which would mean all eigenvalues are less than 0 then it is a local ma minimum uh, oh sorry local maximum and if the matrix is indefinite okay, what is meant by indefinite it is neither positive definite nor negative definite. Okay. So, some eigenvalues are positive some may be negative or some even if they are 0 then it is a saddle point. Thank you.